Hello friends, welcome to yet another video of Hindu Judai. Today we will talk about the complete story. Can India be net arms exporter? India has been the world's largest importer of arms since 2011-12. According to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute or SIPRI, India accounted for 13% of the world's arms imports between 2012 and 2016. While it tops the ranking as an arms importer, India ranks 28 with regard to arms exports. Although India has been involved in defense exports for a long time, the volume of its exports remain insignificant. Recently, however, the figures have been rising, thus signifying a new trend. Developments in the last few years have showcased India's growing willingness to expand its domestic defense production capacity and even export military hardware to friendly foreign countries. First, unlike previous decades, India has begun marketing its defense platform for sales abroad. Many analysts argue that India is shedding its reluctance towards defense exports. Second, the Indian government has undertaken policy changes that aim to address impediments in India's defense export process, making it more efficient and less bureaucratic. India's track record as an arms exporter bears witness of its limited success. India's minimal success can be attributed to a number of reasons, including its historical stand of not exporting defense equipment which can indirectly fuel conflicts. New Delhi is generally known to be cautious about highlighting a security link in its foreign relations and had largely refrained from promoting the idea of defense exports in the past. Moreover, India has had limited indigenous platforms it could offer for exports. This unenviable situation has been further compounded by its bureaucratic defense export procedures. It is worth noting that India's defense exports have been facilitated to a degree by its Soviet-Russian connection. Due to India's decade-long experience in operating, maintaining and upgrading old Soviet-era platforms, it was able to deliver spares, sensors, avionics and offer upgrades to countries that rely on Soviet weapon systems. While this connection has proved beneficial, it can do little to transform India's role into an important arms exporter, especially considering that Russia is itself a leading arms supplier. In the competitive global arms market, Russia and former Soviet states such as Belarus have the advantage of providing the same similar supplies more quickly than India and at lower rates, thus making it more difficult for India to make its own mark or compete efficiently. A major defense export contract signaling a change in Indian thinking was signed in March 2011 when New Delhi agreed to sell its first indigenously designed and built multi-role offshore patrol vessel named Barakuda to Mauritius. Following this deal, there have been numerous agreements with various countries. In March 2017, India finalized a deal with Myanmar for sale of indigenously developed lightweight torpedoes worth 37.9 million USD. Currently, India is in talks with Vietnam for the sale of Akash, a short-range surface-to-air missile. In the medium term, India's export is set to be dominated by naval patrol craft, underwater weapon systems, helicopters, avionics and more importantly, missiles. The most headline-grabbing arms deal is the possible sale of the supersonic missile BrahMos to Vietnam and other countries. BrahMos is a supersonic missile with a flight range of 290 km and a speed of up to Mach 3. Although the possibility of India selling BrahMos to Vietnam has been in the news since 2011, no major progress took place. It was periodically claimed that India was reluctant to sell the advanced cruise missile systems to Vietnam as this could antagonize China. Apart from Vietnam, countries such as Chile, UAE and South Africa have also reached an advanced stage in their negotiations for BrahMos. Needless to say, India's experience with Russia in terms of co-production, for example in BrahMos, has been advantageous not only in strengthening its own defense industrial base 
but also in enhancing its performance as an arms exporter. In view of the current pace of India's defense relations and joint production agreements with countries such as Israel, it is likely that these links may help beef up India's profile as an exporter in the medium or long term. A spurt in India's defense exports can be attributed to a number of steps taken by the Indian government to ease excessive control over arms exports, indicating its intent to enhance defense exports, in 2014, New Delhi introduced a strategy for defense exports, which falls under the multi-sectoral Make in India initiative launched by the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The SDE acted as a corollary to the 2011 Defense Productions Policy, which highlighted the establishment's aim to achieve self-reliance through indigenization of the defense production sector and greater participation of private Indian firms. As stated in the SDE document, the 2011 DPP cannot be achieved without defense export as the industry needs to be assured of access to export markets in addition to domestic market for investing in the sector. Important steps that boosted India's export potential were changes related to issuance of an end-user certificate and allowing defense public sector undertakings to export 10% of their yearly production. Previously, in order to expand further, Indian firms involved in defense exports were required to give a certificate on the purpose of the component, get it signed by the importing foreign company and countersigned by the country's government for every piece of equipment or parts that were exported. These steps made the process bureaucratic and time-consuming, thus making Indian companies less competitive in the global market. The current policy obviates the need to follow the procedure for all equipment except for specific critical items which use sensitive Indian technology. Furthermore, formally, DPSUs were not allowed to export equipment unless the demands of the Indian Defence Forces were fully met. Now, DPSUs are allowed to export a maximum of 10% of their annual production, which may enable Indian firms to fare better in comparison with other global firms. Additional changes include streamlining the procedure for clearance of export permissions or no objection certificates by making it a time-bound and web-based process. 2014 SDE specifies the creation of two new institutions, Export Promotion Body and Defense Export Steering Committee that advise, coordinate and facilitate defense exports. While the DESC functions as a senior level function institution, the EPB acts as an advisory body and is also responsible for coordinating various government schemes and marketing defense equipment in specific countries. India's efforts towards enhancing its military exports emanate from a number of factors ranging from its desire for greater indigenization of the defense sector to employing arms export as a tool of defense diplomacy. With India's economic, political and military rise, it seeks to expand its influence in Asia and beyond. It also wishes to be accepted as an important regional and global player in the changing world order. As India embarks on its geostrategic ambitions, it considers it essential to ensure its strategic autonomy and develop its own robust domestic defense industrial base. India has expressed its dissatisfaction with its heavy reliance on arms imports. Successive Indian governments have asserted the need to have greater indigenization in defense production, albeit with limited success on the ground. With a stronger defense production sector, New Delhi will be able to meet its defense needs without relying on foreign powers, enhance technological advancement, add to its own economic growth, improve the balance of trade and generate employment. In addition, India's strategy of defense exports form part of its broader aim of seeking self-reliance and self-sufficiency in the defense sector. In order to sustain a country's defense industry, it is essential to focus on economic viability of its products. 
No firm can recover its capital cost by focusing solely on the domestic defense market. Therefore, it becomes almost mandatory to look beyond the domestic market and cater for foreign clients. Funds generated through exports can be invested in defense-related research and development, thereby helping to sustain the industry. The Indian defense industry is in dire needs for investment in research and development and requires new customers to ensure that the investment in defense production are financially viable. An amalgamation of these factors motivates the Indian government to prioritize arms exports. The push for military sales is also driven by geostrategic factors in the region. India is witnessing the rise of its neighbor, China, with which it shares a complex equation of conflict and cooperation. At the same time, India is also struggling with its other nuclear-armed neighbor, Pakistan. Given the neighborhood in which India is situated along with its threat perceptions, New Delhi continually seeks to forge relations with like-minded regional and global countries. Therefore, India, like many countries, leverages military diplomacy in its foreign relations. It is in this context that defense exports play a pivotal role. Defense exports are set to become a crucial part of India's active defense diplomacy, especially in case of the Indian Ocean region and Southeast Asia. These trends are evident in India's dealings with Vietnam, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Mauritius, Seychelles, etc. New Delhi's enthusiasm to sell equipment to these countries conveys desire to shape the regional dynamics in a manner that suits its strategic aims and interests in the broader Indo-Pacific region. In order to boost defense procurements from potential clients, India has introduced the practice of offering lines of credit facility to friendly foreign countries. The most recent credit line include 5 billion US dollars to Bangladesh and 500 million dollars to Vietnam. India's focus on military diplomacy through arms export is also corroborated by the fact that its export promotion body coordinates and consults with personnel from the Ministry of External Affairs and Armed Forces. Despite India's intent to carve out a niche for its arms exports, there are a number of complicating factors, many of which are due to India's relatively stagnant defense industrial base. Apart from its ability to export missiles, naval equipment and select parts of defense products, there are limited Indian military products that can be offered on the export market. Even in the case of Indian built equipment like T-90 tank or Sukhoi-30 fighter aircraft, the intellectual property rights belong to foreign firms, thus making it difficult for New Delhi to export without due approval from the supplier firm and country. The same is true for platforms which are co-produced by India with other countries. Consequently, the challenge for India is to produce completely indigenous defense equipment with the highest sales value abroad. India's defense industry continues to struggle with projects that have run for decades past their deadlines. The problem is compounded by India's inability to fully localize and modernize the defense technology it receives from foreign firms. Any improvement in India's performance as an arms exporter will contribute to the success of the Make in India campaign, an important initiative hemmed personally by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Arms export will also bolster India's image as credible defense partner in the Indian Ocean region and Southeast Asia, wherein China's military rise is resulting in changing geostrategic configurations. Although recent policy changes reflect India's seriousness to revamp its defense industry, it will take time and additional policy reforms before the country emerges as a prominent arms exporter. New Delhi will continue to remain dependent on arms import 
for its own defense needs even taking into account that its indigenous defense production sector is gradually improving friends hope you like this video please subscribe us for more such videos thank you